today on Pride Parkway and we'll be taking knackered old Metcalf platforms and turning them into this. Hello and welcome to Pride Parkway. If you're new here, I'm Jeff and this is my N-Gage loft layout. So in this video, I have been busy working on the country station right here, uh, namely the platforms and the car park for the station. I took some old Metcalf platforms I had from my old layout that used to be down in the garage and they were ripped and they weren't great and I could have just covered them with some Metcalf paper, but I wanted to go one step further than that and use plastic card. And in addition to that, I've also built and installed the car park. Um, and that was built using a giant template. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Uh, but it's all in this video. But before we go any further, just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who joined in in the competition that was in my last video. And a massive well done to John who was drawn as the winner. So, enough of me talking. Let's jump into the layout. So today I am going to be starting work on this country slash heritage station. Uh, you might be looking, thinking, well, that looks all right. It's pretty much there. Um, these are old Metcalf kits from my old layout. And I actually have another platform right here as well, uh, because there was three platforms on the old layout. And I kept these and thought they might come in handy. This is going to be my basis, uh, so I'm going to be using two of the three platforms. So I'm getting rid of this one, this very narrow one, and I'm going to be using this one here instead. These are scratched, glue marks, bits of rips on them and all sorts. Um, but structurally, they're good, they're sound. So this is going to be my basis of my platform. So I'm going to get rid of this one, this narrow one, gone finished might cut that up use it for something else and then i'm going to be using this one which is slightly wider and this one at the back um, which is the right shape if i move them buildings out of the way and tip it up you can see that it's got the shape of the station building in it and we've got the ramp at the back um, which is to get into the station that's come loose but that's fine we'll fix that now what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be covering these in some plastic cards some textured plastic cards and um creating a paved surface on the top and a red brick on the sides and so let's just take a minute to talk about platform heights so that what i'm doing will make sense to you now i've just put a box down here just to get the camera height to work but if you imagine this is your baseboard here this blue box what you would normally have is your track put down on the baseboard and your platform put on the baseboard next to it bring in your coach and your coach will sit and get that on the track properly. Um, your coach will sit at, I'm just going to move that around, approximately the right height. There you go. You can see the coach is sitting at the right height for people to be able to get on and off the train at the platform. However, I do things a little bit differently because what I do is I use track bed. Now, this is the track bed I use. It's the Woodland Scenics track bed. It's a foam track bed, and I really like it. It works really well for me. It's got a pre-built ballast shoulder. It's good. Now, this has got a height of about three millimeters. It's about three millimeters thick, if you look on the end here. Now, if we put this down and then put the track on top of the foam, with the coach on top of it. I know the wheels aren't on properly. I haven't got my little railer tool with me at the minute, but if I then put the platform back again this time, you can see now that the coach is way higher than the platform because it's a three millimeters that the track's been lifted up. So what we have to do is we have to bring the platform up three millimeters so that it sits the same height as the foam track bed and then it will be back in the right position. Now, one way you could do it is just to put cork down. So if you look at my main station and um, Pride Parkway, um, there's cork all the way through that and the platform sits on top of it and it's nice and simple. But over where the Heritage Station is going to be slash Country Station, I didn't do that. I used this Woodland Scenics track bed. So that means I need to raise these platforms up by three mil to get them to fit in. And the easiest way to do that it's quite simply 
using three millimeter gray board cut strips of it and i'm just going to glue the strips underneath and i have the back platform here this is the one that i'm going to work on first of all and the very first job i've cut is this three mil thick gray board i've just cut some 10 mil strips of that so i've got a whole load of them ready to go and then on here what i need to do is i'm going to remove these walls from around the back because these will not be staying on it so they need to come off and then in addition to that if i can get it on camera when you build these metcalf platforms you put in a very thin strip of gray board under there i need to cut that out and i've already cut it out at this end uh, you can see they've cut that out now that's a support but because we're going to be adding on top of this cardboard with plastic card um, that will make it strong enough so i don't need that piece in there and all i'm going to do is i'm going to take this gray board and i'm just going to glue it on underneath just a strip down either side as so you can see there i'm just making sure that when i glue it on that it's flush with the front of the platforms as well So you can see the grey board attached. Uh, I've used rocket card glue so I can work quite quick on this, um, but I will leave it a little while, 10 minutes or so just to dry. Um, so that's raised it by three millimeters. So it's now raised by the same height as the track bed is. And I've removed the walls off the back. I've torn it in a couple of places, that doesn't matter. Uh, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my new surface on the top here. And for the surface, I am using Slater's plastic card. So as you can see, I have now covered the entire top surface in the brick, not the brick, sorry, in the um, paving slab effect. Uh, and then I've just rubbed over the edges just with a little bit of sandpaper um, just to make sure it's nice and smooth all the way around. And then the next job for me is that I need to add the walls that are going to go all the way around the back. Uh, you might be thinking, well, you've cut the walls off. You could have just left them on there. A cut off, but the way you build the Metcalf um, platforms is you build the platform and then you add the wall on the top. So unless you get it perfect, you end up with a joint in the middle of the two walls, which I didn't like the look of. Uh, I want to make this a solid wall. So what I've done is I've took some two millimetre grey board. Uh, two millimetres obviously being a foot, which is about the right kind of thickness I want for the wall. Um, obviously by the time I laminate it in plastic card it'll be slightly bigger. But these are the pieces of grey board and I've cut some of the size already. Um, and basically what will happen is this will sit on the back and if I pick that up you can see that's obviously not exactly in place just yet. But what you've got there is a 10 mil hanging over the top which will create the wall. Um, that's going to go around the back of the platform and then if you view it from behind you'll have just one solid wall all the way up. So I've put most of the grey board along the back and the edges. Um, now just as a reminder the reason we don't have a ramp on this end of the platform is because there is a bridge there with a road underneath it so we've got a nice solid wall there. Um, now the last thing that I need to do in this step is to put in this final piece. Now this is where the steps that came with the Metcalf kit, um, I obviously need to reattach the steps in there. So I left this bit clear um, so I could work out what to do. And basically the first thing I've done is I've created the piece of 24 mil gray board, which is gonna go in there the same as the rest of the walls. And what I've done is I've created a gap there, which is the same width as the top of the stairs are. There you can see. So basically that will sit like that. So that's just going to get glued onto there. Now for the steps themselves, I took a little bit more work to get my head around it. But basically the first thing we need to do is raise it up by three mils because we've raised the platform by three mil. Uh, so instead of using three mil grey board, I've used one mil grey board. And I've basically cut out each one five mil, so three pieces and each one's five mil longer. What that does is it gives me step continuation on the side where the steps are and on the side where the ramp is. Okay, so at the minute it looks like it's steps, but when I put the plastic card over the top, that'll just extend the ramp down. So that's the first thing I've done. So that will just sit up against it there. 
and then obviously we'll put the plastic card on and join it the second thing i need to think about was the wall that goes on this side two mil gray board for this and i have used the original piece of metcalf to create a template but what i did was i first drew a three millimeter strip on the bottom so that i could raise it by three mil then put that there drew around it and then i've added 10 mil onto either side uh, to account for this extra piece here and here so i've now cut out the piece of card and i've also cut out a piece of plastic card in the same texture to go on top here so basically that will go up to there that will go on there and then be glued down to create the ramped side and then that will then be attached to the back to create the wall hopefully the camera's picking that up okay we have slater's plastic card two millimeter brick sheet and all i'm going to do is clad all of the gray board and the front of the platforms using this now it's the bricks on this are tiny so they're really hard for the camera to pick up um, and the light shining on it as well but hopefully you can see it and all i'm going to do is cut out strips to the right size so remember along the front here that we need 13 mils so 10 for the original and then three for what we've lifted it up and once i've cut out those strips voila uh, they just need to be glued onto the front like so Very complicated of course is anywhere where there is a ramp such as this and it's really important to remember what you don't want to do is don't glue your bricks on like that because bricks are not slanted bricks are straight so what you would do in this case is you would cut out a bigger square and then you would trim it down to get it to fit onto there clad it all and i'll come back and i'll show you that because somebody might find that useful progress so we have got all that gray board right the way along covered in plastic card and it makes a massive massive difference if i turn it around so you can see the back sorry i have to turn it around off camera and again you can see we've got all the back in place right the way along uh the steps are in there ignore the fact they're two different colors obviously this all needs painting yet uh and right the way along this end is what it's done so all i do is stick on the plastic card and then i've just cut some five mil strips and just glued them on to kind of show them supports that you get on walls as well now i've just got one last bit of this to do let me just turn it around and it's this final bit at this end which i said i would show you how to do it uh, for anybody who doesn't know how to get the bricks so that they're running parallel instead of being on an angle because so what i've done is i've took a piece of plastic card and it's the same height as the back so it is 24 mil high and it is the distance from there down to there which was five centimeters um, so that will fit into there perfectly and then all i've done is i know at this end it needs to be in the top corner and then all i've done is i've measured the height from the cutting mat to the top here which is 12 mil and then i've put on there 12 mil so 12 mils to there and then i've just drawn a line up and that basically once that top bit's cut off that should give us <laughs> the right uh, the right angle for this top bit and then obviously we need to cut this bit to fit in as well so all i've done there is i've worked out the height there which is 10 mil mark down 10 mil put a little dash and then obviously we're going right the way almost to the bottom and two mil up so I've left a tiny little gap there and marked it now i cut this out it should fit now so i've cut it and we've now got the three different pieces don't need that piece don't need that piece that's the bit we want uh, the bricks are still running parallel and that should look at that fit perfectly into there so I'll get that glued on with a bit of rocket glue and then the next job is to get the top of all of these walls capped off and I find the easiest way to do that is to use some strip styrene uh, or you can cut your own 
plastic card if you've got a nice steady hand but this stuff makes your life much easier and the one that i'm using it's evergreen um it's ever so slightly thicker than i would have wanted it to be but it seems to be quite sold out in quite a lot of places so the one i've got is one by 4.8 millimeters so it's one millimeter thick uh, which is six inches so that works fine and then it's 4.8 millimeters wide and that's just a good width to work on here and then all i'm going to do every five um centimeter every five millimeters sorry is i'm just going to basically put this down next to my metal rule and every five mil i just score into it now it's a bit of a laborious job and it takes forever but by doing that when i paint it it means that it'll represent cap and stones. And I've done this on my other walls on the layout, so I know it works. Um, so I'll get that done, we'll get that glued on the top. Uh, I'm gonna do exactly the same process for the walls that I need as well um, to go around the station. So 10 mil strips of gray board. And on top of that, we'll put 10 mil strips of plastic card, and then we'll just cap it off with some cap and stone on the top. All right, so there is the complete piece of platform. And what we need to do now is transform it from this raw plastic card, plastic card, plastic card even, state to the same look and feel as we have here with platform two, which I've already painted up and been practicing. If I just show you the back of it, you can get an idea of how that looks first job will be to give all of the brickwork a coat of humbrel enamel matte 70 and i'll brush it just going in down so that again any streaks or marks any bits that show through looks like natural weathering then i'm going to work on this pavement surface surface and i'm going to be using acrylics for that and i'm going to be using a base coat of sky gray i'm going to do that all the way over it um, then i'm going to dry brush some khaki drab on top of that and then i'm going to dry brush stone gray on top of that and then i'm going to make a wash using this black gray uh, paint and using a really thin wash which hopefully you can see in here um, and then just going to wash all over the top of that to pick out all the stone detail that's acrylic so that'll dry really really quick by the time that's done, hopefully the enamel on here will be finished. What I'll then do is detail on whether the brick works. So I'm going to get the humble enamel on the brickwork first of all, get this done, and then I'll come back and show you how I finish the brickwork. next step is to get this brickwork finished um, you can see I'm not sure whether the camera's picking it up this I keep turning this LED light off as well because sometimes I think the colors come through better when it's turned off but it's quite patchy the brickwork and that's how I wanted it to be that's why I didn't undercoat it so you've got some of that original color of the plastic car come through under the enamel paint so the next job is simply to go along with some acrylic paint in white you've seen this done before brush over it, literally give it a few seconds and then wipe it off. I've done all of that, it's acrylic paint so it's dried really, really quickly. And then I'm gonna get my trusty black wash that I've been using on the rest of the project. And I'm just gonna wash over all the brick walls with the black wash and that will tone down the white. Now remember, this is an old station, the mortar wouldn't be bright white. That's why I've used a grey and that's why I'm going over in a black wash. So that wash has had time to dry. And then the final step that I'm doing with the paintwork is I have some Revel matte acrylic. And this is the reddish brown. And I'm just dry brushing it basically really gently over the top of this paintwork. Now I've already done this side and hopefully you can see the camera's picking up difference that the dry brush and mix I haven't done over here yet I have done this part so all I'm going to do is just really gently 
dry brush over the top of it and all I'm trying to do is get that to stick to the top surface and not to go into the mortar lines. Now a little bit will go into the mortar lines, it's inevitable, but the white is continuing to show through and that's what I want, as is some of the dirty dark wash and the original colour underneath. Um, and you just want to make sure you keep your brush nice and dry and keep going over. I go one way and then I go finish the other way, which is the way rain streaks and things would look on here and hopefully you can see there the difference hopefully the camera's picking it up so this one hasn't been done yet and this one has been done capping stones i've already painted uh, so these are just those strips of evergreen styrene uh, scored to put little lines into them um, to make it look like capping stones and i've painted that exactly the same way as i painted the platform tops the only thing it hasn't had yet is a wash on this once i had the wash that'll go darker and um, all i'm going to do is glue them along the top wash them and then we'll grab some weathering powders to do the final step on these platforms um the reason i don't attach these capping stones beforehand is because when you're trying to dry brush now like this Basically, you're going to get the cap and stones covered in the same with when you put the white on and then you wipe the white off. If you have the cap and stones on, you're going to get it on. So learn that the hard way. Um, and that's why they're not on this platform and they'll get added right at the end. So let's get that done and then we can get this weathered with some weather and powders. If this is your first time visiting Pride Parkway, or if you've been here before and not yet subscribed, I'd be really grateful if you could hit that subscribe button. Simply click subscribe, and if you press the bell icon right next to the subscribe button and select all, you'll also be notified when a video goes live. It's completely free to subscribe, and it's a huge help to the channel. Thanks, guys. All right, so we've got quite a bit of time to kill while we're waiting for different layers of paint to dry. Um, so I'm gonna make a start on the car park for this station as well. Now, this is the area that we're working in. So we've got the level crossing just off camera here. Comes down, this is the bridge here, road comes up and then the road's gonna then come up this incline and into the station. We'll have one platform at the back there uh, one platform at the front. Uh, I've got the two coaches in there just because I've been checking clearances and things while I've been working on the platforms. Um, so, not the easiest area to get into. And actually, when I've looked at it, it's a little bit higgledy piggledy. It's not as flat as I would have liked it to have been. So, I'm going to create the car park on grey board and then just put it down. Uh, and rather than trying to work here in this area, um, I'm going to do it quite a bit of work on the workbench. So the first thing I need is a template of how much space I've got. And then I can use the template to work out where I'm going to put parking spaces and all that kind of good stuff. So all I did was got some A4 white copy of paper, just cheap paper, uh, laid it out, print sticked it down so that it was attached to each other to fill the whole space. And then cut out the shape of the platforms so that I knew exactly what space I had left and then get a pen out and start planning what exactly is going to go where. So the brown area that you see that's a funny shape that is of course the area which is where the platforms are going to be here and um, the paint's drying on the platforms at the moment so I can't put it in place but we've got the road which comes up here um, and the middle line is basically the road area. Anything that's got the dashed line is going to be the footpaths. And then I've marked onto here parking spaces as well. Now, really handy when you're doing this to have two things with you. One, of course, being a car <laughs> and the other one being a bus. And that's kind of helps you to plan the spaces and so on. Now we're going to have a brick wall running right along the back here. That will allow me to put a very thin area of scenic work, some street lights, that kind of thing. And, and incidentally, I've had a few people ask me if I would do a video on LED lights on the layout. So I am going to do one and show you how I light the platforms, the buildings and the um, 
street lights on this as well so hopefully that will be helpful that'll be a couple of videos from where we're at at the moment um so idea being we have parking spaces and i know that's big enough our parking space we have a road that's definitely wide enough for two vehicles to go on i do all my roads normally about five centimeters which is a bit big for this kind of station but it works uh, and then as we move along we'll have the station building here we've got footpaths leading into it now i've got steps at this side and i've got a ramp at this side of the entrance to the platform so i've made bigger spaces on this side so that we can have disabled spaces along here we've got some more parking spaces along the back there as well now incidentally you can still on that road i've checked it it's still wide enough when the car's parked for the road to be wide enough for two cars to drive down it uh we've got disabled spaces there we've got more normal spaces there and then we've got a gap and this is going to be a hatched area um to stop people parking in it and we're going to pop into there a bus stop as well let me move the camera around there we go um, so this is big enough that a bus can come in it can turn around there and it can park there i'm kind of thinking two buses as opposed to service buses i'm using a national express because it's the first thing i grabbed uh, and then down this end we have a whole load more parking spaces uh, so i think i've got about 45 parking spaces in this station so that should look pretty good i'm gonna have another brick wall here which goes to this point uh, that brick wall which is running along the back will come into here and then i'm going to have some double wooden gates onto here which can open up so my thinking is the bus technically if that's too tight because somebody's going to pick me up on it and tell me on the video that's too tight the bus can drive down it can turn around and then it can come back up here um that area is not open to the general public but in that case the bus can go through and um we'll have some nice wooden gates on then some end scenic farm gate and cattle grid so we'll not use the cattle grids obviously but we'll use two gates um 60 mil is what i need there for the two gates uh, and they'll go into there which is separate off from the kind of maintenance area down there so i'm pretty happy with that now we need to start building it so i've moved to part of the loft where i've got a little bit more space just to show you this and to kind of create a better area for me to work on uh, so here we have what i've just shown you which is the paper template and right underneath that we have some one mil gray board which is the right size um, to match the template and that's what i'm going to use so i'm going to work on this get the footpaths and the roads in where i want them uh, and then move it over there and glue it down so i've got a nice flat surface remember this is n gauge uh, and it's quite important to get make sure your surfaces are quite flat because i'm going to cut out of one mil gray board all of the footpaths that i need all of the grey board footpaths will then be covered with my plastic card in the paving slabs and painted exactly the same way as I've done the paving slab platforms. Um, and then I'm going to paint all of the road and parking space areas with this Town & Country Scenic Scenic Texture Paint in Light Tarmac time worn uh, this is from squires uh, it's the same stuff that i used in the tmd i've got loads of it left so it makes sense to keep using it up so i'm going to crack on with this i'm going to get the footpaths on get them painted get the road surface on and then i will be back in just a flash So we've moved on quite a lot and I'm just doing a quick test fit there at the moment. Nothing's glued down. The thing you might have noticed in the last clip was I clearly got distracted when I was painting the white stripes on the platform edges. Uh, then correct now, if I bring the camera down, but I had the white stripe where the yellow stripe currently is and no white stripe. So the reason I did the white stripe there was because I was supposed to go over the top of it with the yellow paint so that it would be seen more clearly uh, just to give the yellow to show and then paint the white. But I obviously got sidetracked and came back up here a couple of days afterwards and was like, why have I done that for? So I put that right. You can see the road 
in place now uh, and I painted that with a texture paint and then I just hit it with a rattle can the odd light missing a black spray paint and then a little bit of grey over the top as well and I've also just painted in a couple of little repair patches as well uh, all the pavements are kind of there nothing's glued down just yet now I'm not going to glue the platforms down because there's going to be lighting to go on to them uh, in a future video and then we'll tidy up the edges along here with some ballast as well once that's in but what I want to get done just to get this video finished for today is to finish this car park and get it glued down so I'm going to glue down all of the footpaths onto it and then I'm going to get all of the road markings put onto it using paint and the woodland scene and road mark and pens as well um, so let's get that done all right guys so time has been a little bit against me so i haven't videoed this final part of the installation but it's gluing it in it's gluing the walls in along the back putting some trees in and um, just bringing it all together so the car park is glued in um, all that green you see along the back is glued in but the platforms are still loose because i've got lighting and all kinds of things to add to these still um, i put a little picture in right now so you can see the height of the platforms so i'm really pleased with how this has all come together there's still a whole load more green to go in this area here along to where the road bridge is uh, all the way along this back area here uh, we've got some work to do with the signal boxes because obviously that wouldn't be tarmac so that needs sorting out um, once the platforms are glued down we're going to have to re-ballast along here. So still lots to do, but I'm pleased with what we've got done so far. I've been really busy away from the railway. Um, what a difference a few months makes. But um, just nipping up here and kind of just taking half an hour here and there. And I know quite often a lot of people say they don't have the time to, to model. And I've been a bit like that myself of late, but I'm just literally taking, if I've got half an hour to come up here, even if it's at nine, 10 o'clock at night, I'm just coming up for half an hour. Um, my other half's watching all kinds of trashy Christmas programs. So I've got a bit of an excuse to escape. But um, yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think. So I'm going to leave this video there. Um, I can keep chipping away and working on little bits of this. Um, just keep going, basically. Um, but I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, the next video, I'm going to be starting work on both a main station building, and I'm going to be kit bashing, killing an old Metcalf station building for that. Uh, and actually... I'm going to kit bash it into a station which closed in the mid 60s in the town where I grew up. Uh, it's quite a simple design, so I thought I'd make, make it quite an interesting little station to go here. Um, in addition to that, I'm also going to be getting the lighting on the platform and in the back of the car park as well. I've had a few people ask me for that, so we'll get that done as well. And um, yeah that's next so if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button down below and if i'm not back in the next week or so which i'm not sure if i will or i won't be have an amazing christmas guys stay safe take care of each other and i'll see you soon cheers bye bye